Welcome to the Unicon Open Source Support Briefing for Open Aquella for Q2. For our agenda today, we will cover some community news, uh, look at the, uh, have a, a brief report on Open Imperio 2018, talk about Unicon sus sustaining engineering efforts in Q2. We will review um, Open Aquila 6.6 .6 that went stable. Um, have a section on looking ahead and then just leave some time for um, any questions or discussions. For community news and activities, we were made aware that post 6.4, so post you know, the Aquila um, versions that are um, any Aquila version that's open source. Um, we actually need to refer to it as Open Aquila, um, as per the, the legal agreements between Pearson and Aperio. Um, and so you you might have started to see already, and you'll continue to see the um, the documentation and the references all change to Open Aquila for anything 6.5 and above. Uh, Open Aquila 6.6 .6 stable was created. Uh, there was a press release um, that was um, I don't think it's directly by Aperio, but it was. Um, talking with the Perio, and I've linked to that, that press release on this slide. For a review of Open Aperio 2018 um, with respect to Open Aquella, uh, we gave three presentations. Uh, one was the, an Open Aquella workshop, which was a few hours, uh, essentially just a crash course in the drivers behind Aquella, the architecture of it, and the abilities. Just did, you know, uh, with the aim of getting people excited about it and giving them a bit more information than a quick demo or, you know, an elevator pitch might be able to, to give. We then gave a, um, we, we actually worked with, um, co-presented with um, Katie from UEN and gave a, an Open Aquila customization presentation in which we highlighted you know, available customizations that you can do with Aquila. And then um, Drew Wills from Unicon and myself gave a, um, a presentation on integrating uPortal and Open Aquila. Um, and we, we aim to give a proof of concept to leverage the, the, the strong value adds that Open Aquila brings to the open source community and the strong value add that uPortal has in the open source community. And so digging a little bit more into that last presentation, um, it really centered around the, the, the concept of using Open Aquella um, to do what it's really good at, being a hub of content, allow it to be customizable, and then integrate with another open source project. Um, and we have deep experience with uPortal, and so that was a, that was a natural fit, as well as uPortal is really good at the presentation and integration across multiple components in a um, in an institution, and so it just it was really just a natural fit. Um, we we used our proof of concept in turn. We implemented it with web components. And that's more of a, a concept or a standard, um, you know. And it wasn't. I didn't view it so important as the precise technology we used to build out the web components, but just that you know how simple it was. To, to get up to speed and to integrate the two. You know, we didn't have to make any code changes to Open Aquila, and the uPortal side was a, it was a fairly simple integration. Uh, we built out two examples that I'll, I'll briefly show on the next couple of slides. You know, I, I felt that it was well-received collaboration. Um, there was not a lot of um, current Open Aquila adopters there. There was, um, uh, Matt from BYUI came and was able to talk about their um, their implementation of Open Aquila, which was appreciated. Um, but from the uPortal community, it seemed to have, be well received to be able to integrate these two and to have a, a CMS that's in the open source space now. So this was the first uh, web component that we built out. Um, it was it was very simple, right? It was just to show. You know, here, here's a concept of what you can do, and then you could add more. You could add the, you know, the keyword search bar, or you could get a list of the advanced searches or search by collection. Whatever you need to do, you can just build out that, that search API URL 
and then the results are returned back in a format that the, um, in this case, it was a uPortal um, portlet could understand, right? And that, and it was all handled inside that web component. So you could take that web component and you could drop it into an Aquila portlet if you wanted to, or something completely different. And you would always be able to get back these, uh, you know, these results as long as you were authenticated to Aquila. And then the other proof of concept that we built out was a was an image carousel or a banner. Um, and so, you know, people may have concerns that, you know, well, right now the like the 6.5 UI for Open Aquella is, you know, a bit antiquated. It's not responsive. Um, and and really using web components and integrating with presentation layer um, software such as uPortal or, you know, other other software out there that's really good at that, you can go ahead and use modern widgets and still utilize Open Aquella in, you know, at what it's, you know, it's really, really good at as a hub of content that's searchable and indexable and customized. And so now looking at sustaining engineering in, in Q2 of this year, uh, there was a couple of GitHub issues that we resolved um, as well as a helper script. So we, uh, we fixed that when you want to display attachments based on on a metadata field, uh, they didn't always appear. Just the way, the you know the way that you architected the metadata, uh, you can make it so some of the attachments wouldn't display even though you have, you you know you configured it to be that. And so that's now in six six stable. Um, and then we added a a small enhancement to allow a cap on how long the background indexer will run. So there was cases, um, I think specifically with PDFs, where the background indexer would just churn, right? It would be running for, for minutes and minutes, um, up past hours, and it would be slowing down Aquila. So we allowed their, their a cap to be configurable, um, you know, install wide. And then we also open sourced the script to remove unassociated attachments. So this was an issue that one of our subscribers found. Um, and in in order to have a quick solution and not have to do a, a go through a full upgrade, we just developed a script and then um, the adopt the subscriber was willing to have it be open source uh, with the driver to you know share these these abilities, these scripts, these ideas with the community so the community can build upon them and hopefully add their own um, and just to be able to more effectively use Aquila in your institution. So going into six six. Uh, for a review, um, this is this is based largely off of the the features guide that is in the Aquila um, GitHub doc repo. Um, there was a, a series of reporting tutorials created. No functionality was actually added to 6.6, but this came out around the same time. Um, and the tutorials just aim to give a foundation on how to build BERT reports. Um, you don't specifically have to use BERT when using Open Aquella, but that's the that's the reporting tool that's um, integrated with Open Aquella. Uh, additional metadata from LMS, this allowed course and user and um, and Moodle information to be actually stored in a given item to allow a, a tighter integration between the two. Work on the admin console migration was done. Uh, they the the course editor was not removed from the admin console, but it was exposed as a REST API. And then the UI was created for that in the 6.6 in the new UI that we'll talk about in a moment. As well as the REST API, fun or the REST, I'm sorry, the reporting functionality from the admin console was um, ported over to, to a REST API. And, um, and there's future plans then to, to migrate it fully and have there be a web UI for, um, for managing reports. Um, as this admin console migration work has been happening, you know, the REST API is continuing to be enhanced. The SOAP API is not, right? If there is a bug that absolutely needs to get fixed, um, you know, it's, you know, then that might be changed, but the REST API is where all this new functionality is going into with the, um, with the long-term future goal that we will um, we will be able to do anything in Open Aquella through the REST API. Then, if you want to use the, the you know the native UI, you can, 
or if you want to go and go the route of like web components or deeper integration with other presentation software, uh, you can now, then you'd be able to use any part of Open Aquila um, through that integration. Uh, some wizard configuration enhancements were made. So when you're doing a repeater, uh, you're using a repeater widget, there's an add button at the top that when you click it, adds a repeater node to the top of the list. And then there's still that add button at the bottom where it'll add a repeater node at the bottom. And then it was just, a, you know, a delete confirmation box was added when you delete a repeater node. Uh, metadata based facet searching. This has been something that has been kind of a pain point in the, you know, in six, five and below where the only, you know, facet based searching um, that you can filter by for your searches has really been mind types. Um, and while useful, it's, you know, it doesn't follow the concept that Aquila tries to promote that everything is customizable, right? Um, and so in this, in the new UI, um, they, the facet searching has been enabled, so you can just pick an arbitrary metadata path and it will fill in the options based on uh, the, the items that are the values of the in the items that are already in the repository and then give you counts similar to the browse topics. And then, um, you know, in 6.6, the new UI that is being, um, you know, it's the prototype and, and work is continuing to happen on it. Um, but this is where we first start seeing this, um, this UI introduced. It uses Google material design. It's responsive. Um, but there's, there's a couple things to note about that. And we'll see that in the next slide. So when you're when you're upgrading to 6.6, um, take a take a look at your language pack because most of the keys for the language pack has changed. It's mostly just a find and replace. Uh, you don't you know the actual um, concept of what the key is for hasn't been changed, but your 6.6 language pack will not work as expected um, as is in 6.6 as well as your your CSS theme. So if you read the features guide, it says, you know, don't use don't use the new UI with your your CSS customizing. I mean that's because that the new UI with you know the Google material design that's not themable yet. But as well, the old UI in 6.6 um, that's non-responsive but should be that behaves very similar to what 6.5 used to be or 6.5 behaves as um, the the HTML um, elements, the you know the paths in order to do CSS selection has changed. Uh, so there's there's updated example themes in GitHub. The the concept of how your theme is set up should be fine. It's just you have to go in and change your CSS selectors. Um, along with um, you know we talked about that the new UI is not themable at this point. Um, when it does become themable, there's not a driver to make it you know, fully customizable where you can do kind of anything you want with it. It's going to be kind of within some set bounds that is that adhering to the Google material design uh, best practice. And then if you want to go even further and customize your UI, that's when you start looking at just using the REST APIs and, and building out really whatever you can imagine. So looking ahead, um, I, uh, we, we had a, um, a discussion with Adelax, who is the, you know, at this point, they contribute most of the code, the code enhancements to Open Aquila. Um, and then we took a look at our roadmap as well. Um, I am not aware of anyone else at this point in the community that actually does development on Open Aquila. Um, although, you know, the you know Edelax and Unicon as the as the community developers at this point you know it's it's welcome and we would encourage folks to to get excited and be interested in developing Open Aquila. But just as an i um, as an idea of where where the Open Aquila is headed with the two roadmaps of the main service providers, um, it's not a this is not a uh, they're not guaranteeing that this is going to stay, you know, just like this because Edelax is similar to Unicon in how it, it works with um, Open Aquila enhancements and bug fixes. It's dri driven by the subscribers in their region, just like we are. So this is currently what is on their roadmap, but if something comes up and they need to switch it, 
um, you know, they wanted to make sure that, you know, they're welcome. They said that we're welcome to go ahead and, and show this to the community, but that it shouldn't be viewed as a guarantee of this is what's going to happen. It's just currently what's, what they're looking at. So on their roadmap, they're, they're going to continue on the admin console migration. They see the value add behind that. Um, they are looking at making it more visible for item and file usage stats to come through instead of having to run a report, you'll be able to see it directly on the item. Um, streamlining, when you add an open Aquila attachment, trying to remove more clicks so it's a, a cleaner experience for users. Adding an HTTP referral in the, in the log. Um, they're continuing to work on the new search UI. And so right now you can go and you can see uh, the prototype of the new search UI, but they're continuing to enhance it. Um, and kind of complete the work that they started in 6.6. And then they did some course, and they're looking at to do some course search improvements. So anywhere in Aquella where there's, when you select the course and there's a drop down, they're going to change it to a, a search box. As far as our roadmap goes in the near term, uh, we're going to do some, some scripting API enhancements, and those are the GitHub issue numbers out there for further details. Uh, we have some bug fixes we've identified from the community, from our subscribers that um, that should be, um, you know, that we've we've understand the value add in fixing, and so that's that's on our roadmap. And then we're also um, invested in continuing this admin console migration. Um, it's it's getting out of the business of having to have the user install uh, Java applets and Java Web Start in order to just work with the quality. So looking ahead, the, the drivers that we've started to, to understand based on conversations with, with folks, uh, you know, what are the pain points of Aquella? And this is, these are things that we could see being useful in the future. Uh, this is not a, you know, in any way a guarantee of what Unicorn's going to be doing, um, but it's supposed to get folks, you know, starting to think about, well, what what would be useful for you in Aquella? And then if we can pair some, um, some backing from adopters, then these, these drivers could start becoming, you know, actionable items and they can actually become enhancements to Aquella, such as, you know, a toolbox for all of these separate scripts that have been developed for Open Aquella. You know, EBI uh, did, you know, went a lot of the way there, where you can do a lot of um, customization on how you do bulk import of content and then how you do um, bulk export of content, but it's it's written in Python. Currently, you can't. It's it's not really buildable in um, in the Mac operating system, and you have to build it per environment. And so it, it makes it a little difficult to work with, and then you know drive adoption for folks to continue to build out that um, you know to build out EBI. And so the consideration of well, do we want to build a toolbox that has a more modern code base? you know, and kind of look at bringing in a lot more scripts. Uh, indexing strategies, right? I mean, there are, there are pain points where if your cluster gets out of sync, which is a lot better now The Zookeeper has been introduced um, in, it was back in 6.2, you know, it's, it's a lot more stable, but there is times where the indexing gets off. And so if you had an indexing strategy where you just gave it to, you know, AWS Cloud Search, or a distributed Lucene cloud, um, you know, it might completely relieve those those issues. A file store strategies, right? Uh, right now, Aquila works with it needs to have a directory path. Would it be useful to um, have a file store strategy of everything in S3 or another cloud hosting provider's, um, you know, storage solution? IAM strategies, right? You have to integrate with CAS or external authentication right now just to authenticate a username, and then you have to make a separate call to LDAP or you know, you know, another way to actually understand that you know what what groups and the profile values for that authenticated user. And best practices would suggest that. You, know, you should be able to make that in one call and just say, yes, this user is authenticated and here are their details. And then UI strategies. Right? This is already starting to be worked on with the effort of the new UI coming through. Right? It, was, it was not responsive and you know, it was difficult for, uh, to gain adoption 
you know, when folks looked at it and they saw that it wasn't responsive, it wasn't really a modern look and feel. And so that's being addressed, but also the ability to say, look, I, I want to completely change how Aquila looks. And so we want to be able to do that REST API. Are there other UI strategies that folks, you know, would be interested in looking at? And so I wanted to pose three questions to this group. They don't have to necessarily be answered now. Um, if you have any comments on this in the Q&A section, I'd, I'd love to, to start gathering some thoughts. Uh, but also, let's you know use the the you know the communication channels out there in the Aquila community. And this is not just Unicon subscribers, right? This is anyone that has an interest in this. What what integrations would be useful? At Open Aperio, there was a a large uh, Sakai um, presence. And the people that we talked to, the adopters of Sakai, seemed interested in Open Aquila, but Open Aquila um, used to have supports for Sakai, and it's no longer supported, but that, that doesn't mean that it can't be supported again, right? And just make, you know, refresh that integration and make it one of those standard integration offerings of Open Aquila. Um, just as an example, another example that we saw from Open Aquila is an authoring tool called Xerti, where you create these learning objects and well, what if you could do that just directly from Aquila and just, you know, hook into the Xerti tool and then it just responds with a learning object that you store in your, your Open Aquila item. Uh, what is preventing Open Aquila going the next step for you, right? I mean, hopefully that, you know, if you're on this call, you're either considering Open Aquila or you're using Open Aquila, but what's, what's blocking you from, you know, driving greater adoption in your community of, you know, of influence um, and, you know, understanding what that is, then the community can help build out an, a, an open Aquila offering in the future that is just more and more stable and uh, more resilient and has the features the community needs. And then just the last question, are folks interested in helping to develop open Aquila, right? And that's not necessarily just you know, providing dollars to a service provider such as Edelax or Unicon. It's also, you know, becoming a developer, you know, getting excited about an enhancement that you want to see get into Aquila and dig into the code, create that enhancement, and then and become a, a developer in the open Aquila community. So, you know, this is the community contacts. We've seen this in the last briefing as well. Um, nothing has really changed from there. We have the website. Uh, that has been updated with the new name, the or with the the appropriate name at this point. We have the two Google groups for for the Open Aquila community. There's a Slack channel. There was an issue with the Slack channel that um, at the at the Aperio level, uh, they've run out of being able to add more um, more domains that you can sign in to chat like self registration. So there's a there's a discussion going on. At, at the at the larger level on you know is slack the best option or should there be another chat service so just just know that if you try to jump on there but the aquila dev and aquila users Google groups is you know alive and and as active as it can be at this point uh, although it would be great to see it more active uh, we're still using the github issues tracker for all bug um, bug tickets and then enhancements and then there's the Twitter handle for just, you know, the, the more high level up to date um, information on Aquila. And with that, just kind of open it up. Are there any questions or comments from, from what you saw in this presentation? Hey, Chris, this is John Sweeten from uh, uh, North Carolina. How you doing? Hey, I'm doing all right. Hey, I had a question. Is there any um, appetite or heard anybody else you know ask for like a, a simplified install packages uh, that include all the at least the open source um, you know components uh, for open up equella now similar that you know similar to like what Moodle has with using um, XAMP just to you know or just so that you don't have to have basically a you know a degree in, uh, in information technology to uh, kind of play around with Equella. Is there is there any I mean any talk out there or kind of simplify that because it's it's not simple. Yeah, are you talking about just installing and running Equella 
Yeah, or are you talking host. about integrating with like Moodle? No, no. Uh, local host installing, you know, M Moodle locally, uh, you know, relatively straightforward, it, you know, all the, it, because looking at the documentation versus, you know, what's there is, is not enough to get, you know, a relatively, you know, new person, you know, that you don't have mm -hmm. you know, uh, a deep in the knowledge of code or, you know, running things from, you know, telnet, that type of thing. Is there a, you know, is there any talk about how to make it? Because I think it would increase adoption myself of mm -hmm. making it straightforward. If somebody say, oh, okay, I can kind of play with this, run it, you know, local home, mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, get a feel for it, um, you know, and it would help developers and, you know, as far as you know, testing different integrations out locally versus you know needing a you know a whole uh, you know full server set somewhere. Yeah, so I have I've seen some some interest in creating Docker images for uh, installing Aquila, uh, as well as um, you know, as building Aquila, right? Just to make it um, so you can get up and running with with Open Aquila. As far as interest in creating a, you know, including Moodle configuration, I haven't seen that um, or heard of it yet, but I can see the value out in it, right? If you want to be able to spin something up and try Moodle or Open Aquila or CAS, you know, it's having, having just a standard way to do it in a more modern environment uh, would be really useful. I know that, you know, groups like uPortal have been working on, on Docker to be able to run that, even though their their U portal start is um, makes U portal adoption a lot simpler now, but they, you know they went a step further and did Docker as well. Um, so I, I can see that as a as another driver for um, making Aquila easier to adopt and just take a look at. So I'll definitely you know kind of note that. Okay, thanks. Um, one other thing, um, I don't want to uh, get anybody too excited or anything, but. Um, uh, Chris and I have talked about this already. This is this is John again. Um, uh, we're at North Carolina. We're doing a research project uh, where we're integrating um, uh, machine learning into our Equala instance, uh, and we're making some uh, some hooks out to some open source um, logarithm code that's going to be able to improve our search engines and. Uh, our search recommendations based off of a, kind of a third party uh, set of uh, logarithms. And as soon as we get like a, a, a real uh, a stable kind of demonstration, we'll come back and show you what we've been working on. Well, that sounds really interesting. Thank you for letting us know. All right. Eric Pettiplace here. I have a question. Yes. Um, when you say that the 6.6 .6 UI isn't themable, what does that mean? Uh, like the way the elements are set up, you literally can't target them with CSS selectors? Right. It's not, it's not set up to, um, to key off of that, that theme that folks are, are, you know, should be familiar with, where you go into the settings page, go into the theme, and you upload that zip file that contains customer.css. That has no effect when you're using the new UI at this point. Um, and then the the um, when when the new UI becomes themable, it will use a different setup um, than than what's currently known, right? So it's not that just CSS selectors are going to change with the new UI theme. It's it's going to be a different way to theme Aquila. Okay, thanks. Sure. All right. Well, with that. I thank you folks for, for jumping on and for the comments. Uh, we, will, we will be sending out the slides and the recordings uh, shortly. Thank you for your time.